Hi everybody, welcome back. Uh, this is the first of a two-part episode where I want to make a bit of progress with the Zukimura uh, 132 scale BF109. Uh, it's been two or three weeks now since I've posted an update uh, and I've got another 132 scale uh, project in the plans for January so it's a high time that I got this one finished off. So this time I'm concentrating on painting the airframe. I've got one or two little bits and pieces to do before that and that'll be uh, in the early part of the video. But we'll then move on and get the airframe painted. And next time in part 5B I'll finish that off by uh, fitting and painting the masks for the National Insignia and we'll get a coat of uh, gloss varnish on ready for the kit stencil decals. So let's get cracking, we'll get the uh, aircraft ready for some paint. Okay, so in this uh, episode, as I said, I'm going to be uh, getting the airframe ready for paint, first of all, and then we're going to do some painting on the model later on in the video. Uh, but in order to do that, I want to get all the rest of the airframe parts sorted out. So we've got the control surfaces, the radiator flaps, the cowlings to fix temporarily into place and I'll show you how I do that. We've got the radio bay uh, cover here which is this part and the undercarriage uh, covers as well. I want all those to be in place so that when I come to do the camouflage scheme and the weathering that it, uh, it all matches up. I don't want it looking patchy uh, with new pieces of plastic being introduced later on in the build so do it all together. So the first thing I want to do is to tackle the panel line so I want to reinstate the panel line along the top of the fuselage. I've already done the underside here so on most aircraft we'd be very keen to get rid of that center line seam but not on the 109 we want to uh, reinstate that join. That's where the panels were joined together along the top and bottom. So in order to do that, I use some uh, stiff tape to give me a guide. And I use uh, something called Dymo tape in the UK. It's a very stiff plastic tape. And it used to be used in offices for printing out labels and so on. Uh, I can't imagine it's used very much these days. And I'm sure that at one point in time, it's not going to be available. But I've got a bit of a stock of it. Uh, and that's what I'm going to use. So this is it. Um, because it's uh, getting scarcer, I suppose, I cut this in half along the length. And then I get two nice straight edges, two pieces to use. So uh, I have to be a bit frugal with this. Just make sure that I get the straight edge rather than the edge that I've cut. Now the key to this for me is not to do this too early. This fuselage has been joined for probably three weeks now. So that uh, connection that join along the top of the fuselage is absolutely solid now completely dry so we've not got any uh, soft glue or soft plastic in that join because if you do it too early and you try to scribe this line what tends to happen is you just drag the molten plastic out of the seam and it makes a real mess so you want to be scribing into solid hard plastic which is what I've got now on this line. Now the first thing that I like to do is to just use a very fine razor saw like this. This is a razor saw blade that I hold in one of these large knife chucks. And I particularly like these ones with the very slight curve on the end. And that allows you just to run very gently along the side of the tape to start to introduce the beginnings of the panel line. And the saw is very gentle, so it gives you the first sort of reference cut, if you like, before making 
the proper scribe, either using an alpha cutter like this, you can use, or I like to use these. These are uh, Radu Brinzan scribers. I'm not sure if they're still available actually, but there are lots of different scribers available on the market. I just prefer these. And they give a really nice uh, line. It actually cuts a sliver of plastic out of the panel line. And it tends to reflect or match the moulded panel lines in most kits. So that's my favourite. But first of all, I just want to make that reference saw cut along. And this is just a case of working along very gently. And the advantage of using a saw blade with this upward turn on it is that it just follows the tape a little bit easier. And I'm hardly using any pressure on that at all. I don't want to dislodge the tape. And I don't want to cut too deeply into the plastic. It's just to start to get the beginnings of that line. So I'm pushing slightly into the tape. So from right to left. That just keeps the blade on track. Because you don't want to wander off, obviously. You don't want a line that uh, goes all over the place. And as I said, the trick is doing it in gradual steps rather than trying to put the line in all at once. And eventually, when the scribe is deep enough, the blade follows the groove a little bit easier. So there's less chance of it wandering offline. The tape can come off. I'm just making sure that I can continue to scribe without the tape in position, which I can. The line that I've got there is deep enough now. We also want to reintroduce the uh, panel lines that go up and over the fuselage, so these ones. So having a saw blade like this in a knife handle just gives a little bit more control, I think. And then very gently with the actual scriber, you can find the saw line. And just make your final cut. And if there's any slight burrs on that, you can remove them at this stage. Back with a scriber, it just clears out that little bit of sanding dust. And to smooth it out, finally, I just use a little bit of liquid cement just along the line and that just cleans the scribe up a little bit. Scribing works sometimes difficult to see uh, but a little trick that I use is just to hold the uh, fuselage in this case up to the light. I can't obviously do it on camera. I just hold that up to the light and if you look along the panel line at a very acute angle uh, it shows up a lot better. You can see, uh, probably through shadow, exactly what it's going to look like under paint. So uh, I'm happy with that. That's uh, turned out all right. So I'm going to leave it at that. The temptation sometimes with scribing, I think, is to go over and over it. Uh, and that just runs uh, the risk of making it too deep, for one thing. But also, the more times you mess about with it, 
the more chance you've got of uh, the scriber running offline and then you've got all sorts of problems with repairs. So that's all good. I've got a little bit of work to do on this uh, bulkhead at the rear of the canopy. That's not quite fitted very well. So I just need to sand that down a little bit and a little bit of filler will sort that out. So I'll do that off camera and then we can come to sort out all the control surfaces and the radiator flaps next. Okay, so that's all sanded down. It's all level now. And the panel line around that back section of the cockpit that's all been uh, reinstated the panel lines. Now I want to uh, sort out all the control surfaces which are these parts here. So we've got the flaps, the ailerons and the radiator flaps as well. Zukimura give us the option of raised or lowered flaps and also the option of opening up the cowl flaps as well or the uh, radiator flaps. So I'm going to open up all these parts. The cowl flaps have got a little uh, ejector pin but it's raised so uh, that should be fairly easy to remove and it's worth doing if you're having them open. I can uh, glue the ailerons together and they can go on the wing at this stage. At this stage I'll fit the leading edge slats in the closed position. These will be extended later on but this is just so I can match the camouflage scheme up. Something I like to do you might have noticed when I'm assembling parts like this is uh, to hold them with tweezers whilst I'm applying the glue. And I do that because sometimes if you hold the parts together with your fingers, the glue can get underneath your fingers and spreads all over the part. There's uh, less likelihood of doing that with tweezers. Azuki Mora give us four combinations uh, to deploy the landing flaps, which go in this position, and the cowl flaps, or these radiator flaps. I've decided to have mine with the landing flaps down, so as you've seen, I've built mine in that configuration. And I'm having the radiator flaps open as well. So you have to select the correct hinge which is this part here uh, for one of your chosen options so there are four different hinges so the way that I've built this is to actually attach the hinge to the uh, radiator housing which is this part which fits underneath uh, I've not fitted the radiators yet as you can see and I need to paint the interior of the radiator housing in RLM02 as well, but I'll do that after I've made, uh, done the main camouflage scheme. So fitting that hinge at this stage enables us to just drop that housing in position. That's how it will be when it's fitted. And we can then attach the upper flap, the upper cowl flap, like that. 
and that can just be tacked in position whilst I do the main painting of the airframe and then detach it all, do the interior colours, fit the radiators and get it all reassembled. So uh, that's a deviation from the Zukimura instruction. They would have us build all this with the radiators in position fitted and all the interiors painted obviously. But I just think this is an easier way of going about it. The key thing is to make sure that this hinge is fitted in the correct place and the trick there is to do that whilst not gluing it to the wing so that's how it should look when you do it the way that I'm doing it so I'll do the other side now so we want the inboard hinge first and we need the matching hinge for the starboard side so this is the top cowl flap and the hinge is positioned like that on the inside edge just leave that to dry put that to one side so I just drop the radiator cowl into position and the hinge goes on the outboard edge of it like that and I just tacked that into position at this point here with a tiny amount of liquid glue and that's just enough to hold it to the uh, radiator cowl but not glue it to the wing you don't want to glue it to the wing at this stage then we can remove that and reinforce it. You want a really good fixing of this. It's obviously supporting the flaps themselves. So uh, that's the control surfaces ready. I'm just going to tack those in and I'll show you how I do that in a while. Uh, but we now need to move on to getting all the cowlings in position. I built these in the last episode. And these just need to be tacked onto the forward part of the fuselage. So for masking the engine I'm basically going to use the cowlings to do that. And I'll start off with this forward cowling ring. So I've applied some tape onto the inside face. And what that lets me do is position the cowlings later on like that and the tape seals the inside of the join you won't get any paint seeping through onto the engine hopefully so and I'm also going to put a couple of pieces on the inside of the lower cowling like that So that just seals off that underside joint.
I think I've got uh, the cowling sealed off there. Hopefully the uh, oil cooler on the underside I've put some foam in the uh, intake to that and also on the reverse side the exit so that's ready to go I think and I'm also going to fit the windscreen temporarily as well that's a really nice fit onto the front there and I want to do that because I think sometimes if you paint transparencies separately to the main airframe you can see the difference in colour it's very difficult to get it to match up so I'd rather paint it all together now Zukimura provide these die cut uh, masking sheets and I'll use that on the windscreen here then I'll attach it temporarily uh, to the fuselage mask the rest of the cockpit up and then that should be sorted out Okay, so I think uh, I'm just about ready there and the first thing I'm going to do is just give a check coat of primer just to make sure I've not missed anything and then uh, I'll do some pre-shading and we'll start to put some paint on. Okay, so that's the uh, a coat of uh, Mr. Surface of 1500 on there. I'm happy with the finish. So we're ready for some paint. Now we're going to start by doing a bit of pre-shading on this and just break up the surface using some uh, mottle masks. And I'll use uh, a mixture of uh, something like a NATO black or a rubber black and some earth as well, some dark earth, particularly on the underside around the wheel wells. And that colour will just reflect through the thin coats of top colour that I'll put on a bit later on. So we'll uh, get that pre-shading done first off. Okay, so ready to go. These are the splatter templates. These are uh, uh, Van der Rosten templates. I think they do two sets of these in uh, different sizes, maybe different patterns, I'm not sure. But uh, these are the ones that I've been using. And I just use these to break up the surface, really. It just gives the finish on the camouflage a bit more interest. And I've got some Tamiya Lacquer Rubber Black in the airbrush. And the pressure is set to about 12 PSI. It's quite a low pressure. I don't want uh, to be getting the paint everywhere. And I'm going to be going quite close in here. So if the pressure is much higher than that, you tend to get uh, spider patterns on the paint. The paint itself is quite thin as well so it's probably about 70%. I don't measure things exactly when I'm mixing paint but it's about 70% something like that. So let's just give it a go.
Now I've got a bit of uh, NATO brown actually, it's Tamiya acrylic NATO brown. Okay, so that's the pre-shading done with the random model on it and I've added some of the brown, NATO brown, at the back of the wheels. Just a bit of wheel spray there and hopefully that will show through the pale blue when we put that on. And also I've added a bit of brown to the wing roots where some uh, dirty boots will have uh, mark those wing root areas and again hopefully that will show through the darker colours so uh, I'll make a start with the camouflage scheme now and for this I'm going to be using Mr Hobby acrylics it's RLM 74, 75, 76 the classic uh, late war Luftwaffe scheme for fighters and I'll be starting off with the RLM 76, this is the light blue which goes obviously on the underside and quite a way up onto the sides of the fuselage as well. So uh, that's the first colour on the 76. So I've started off with the RLM 76, starting with the uh, main flaps here and the trick with it is not to cover up completely all the uh, pre-shading that you've done and the problem that I've got with the camera is that it tends to wash the effect out a little bit so it can look as though I've covered the whole thing up but if I can try to come in a little bit you might just be able to pick up that there is that staining effect now on the uh, paintwork So we need to replicate that on the rest of the airframe. So I'll just carry on and build this effect up. You can see that because the paint's thinned so much, it's probably thinned about 60-70% uh, thinners. You get a very translucent finish on this and it's just a case of building that up gradually until uh, you get the right effect. So I'll carry on with that once I've finished the 76. I'll uh, do a little bit of masking up and we can start with the top surface colours then. Okay onto the uh, upper surface scheme now and I've already applied the uh, RLM 75 to the starboard wing here uh, and that's just been done freehand. I'll put some soft masks to do the uh, darker of the two colours which is the RLM 74 grey green colour. So I'll just mist in the same colour, the 75 on the port wing.
Okay, so uh, I'll carry on with the RLM 75. And uh, once that's done, we'll get her mast up and get the green on. I've got the airframe mast up now for the RLM 74, that's the grey green. I've used masking tape for this, I want a fairly hard edge. I might just go in later on once I take the masking off uh, with the airbrush to soften one or two areas. Uh, but on the fuselage it'll get softened anyway with the model that I'll apply uh, once I've removed the masking tape. The cowl flap here I've temporarily tacked it into position so that I get the uh, masking going onto the cowl flap so it all matches up. So uh, let's get some of the grey green on. This is the uh, Mr Hobby again RLM 74. And I'll just get the main areas sorted out first. Then once I remove the masking, I can soften some edges up and do the model on the side as well. Right, that's the basic scheme on, so I'll get the masking tape off. Then we can look at uh, doing some few touch-ups. And maybe a bit of the model as well. Okay, I'm happy with the camouflage scheme. The masking's come off all right. There's one or two areas where some of the tape glue has just tacked onto the paint a little bit, but that'll polish out. So now I want to uh, come back in with the airbrush to add some mottle to the uh, fuselage sides. And for this I've uh, wound the airbrush back a little bit, the compressor's set to round about uh, 10 psi.
Okay, so I'm uh, happy with the model now. And I have been over it uh, a couple of times to get the effect that I want. The first time I did it, uh, the footage that I showed you in the video uh, a few minutes ago, uh, I was doing it far too small. So it was looking very uh, stippled really, and I didn't want that. So I've gone over it again. I just went back with the blue along the side uh, and came in with some larger uh, splotches of the grey and the green. But the blue was only a very light misting. So what that's done is it had the effect of letting the earlier work show through. So it's uh, got lots of different tones in the mottle, which is what I was after. So doing this sort of camouflage isn't my favourite part of modelling and not my favourite part of painting for sure. Uh, but I'm fairly happy with that. And uh, the little trick or accident really of going over it again with the light blue uh, and then again, so repeated applications of the model. It's uh, something that I'll probably do again in the future. So uh, that's as far as I'm going to do uh, for this first part of this two-part uh, video. Uh, next time I'll paint the theatre band, the yellow theatre band on the tail. We've also got uh, the yellow wingtips to paint in. And I'll also uh, be masking off and painting the national insignia. And I'll be using these Montex masks. So uh, this is actually a set for Hasegawa's 132 scale G14, but it does have uh, Hartman's white one. And it gives the uh, masking for the one and the bars at the back of the fuselage and also obviously the national insignia which I'll be using. So that should give a bit better effect than the uh, decals. Uh, but at that point, once I've finished uh, 5B, part 5B, we'll get the all the national insignia on using those masks. And I'll seal it in with a coat of gloss varnish ready for the kit stencils. So uh, that video will be coming up in a couple of days uh, in the new year, actually. So happy new year, everybody. And thanks for your support in 2022. It means a lot to me. Uh, and hopefully we'll have lots of uh, good builds in 2023. I've already got some plans uh, for fairly early on in the new year. So I'll catch up with you again uh, in a couple of days, as I said. Uh, in the meantime, have a great new year, everybody. Stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.